Hello. It's probably pretty choppy because the internet here is not the highest speed. But we're up on the peak right now. Hope for a little walk. Hello. Karen. Just like old times, yeah? But, uh, hey guys. Yeah, we'll walk you over to the little observation deck. We're up at the peak. There you can see it. And live streaming is a much bigger industry in China than it is, say, in the U.S. Um, live streaming is a huge market business in China. For those who don't know, this was my morning routine. I did this every single day for many, many years. This is one of the most, things I missed the most about leaving Hong Kong was this walk. Lots of birds. This is how we started the Periscope days. All those videos are still up on my channel, just buried, buried, way down deep. Joining, we're on the peak Hong Kong. We're going over to a couple observation levels just up ahead as I walk around the peak. That's my morning routine here in Hong Kong. Yeah, we had to kick up a, another level to pass them. It's not really that far. It's like uh, this this loop is about a mile and a half, and then it's another mile and a half to get downtown. Now this viewpoint didn't exist until a typhoon came and like wiped out all the trees. That was just a few years ago. Now you can't notice it, but I'm actually slightly walking uphill. 
I notice it. I get it all back on the other end, it's all downhill. But the next 400 meters or so, there is an incline. Um, what's that? Uh, I don't know. The elevation is, well, right now about 1,500 feet above sea level, which is the height of the IFC Tower right over there. Yeah, well, minimum wage is very low, so they can hire lots of workers to clean. I think minimum wage is like five dollars an hour US. I'm not sure, I gotta check that. Maybe less, maybe more. Yeah. <sighs> We're almost to the viewpoint. Getting up there. construction up there. No, there's a lot of people walking around up here. Here we go. Everybody eats small portions here. All right, let's keep walking. We'll go up to the higher viewpoint. There are clean bits and dirty bits of the city. It depends where you go. There are very clean areas and there are very dirty areas. <laughs> the Peak, it's a pretty popular tourist place in a very ex exclusive area. So they do a lot to keep it looking pristine. <sighs> Weak internet. Also, people walk here a lot more than they do in the U.S. Helps keep them fit. Same like New York. New Yorkers are seven pounds lighter than the average American. network connection so we're getting uh, losing the signal <coughs> coming in and out not much I can do about that I'm not on a bicycle I should be though <laughs> With my other high quality camera so this video will be up later in high quality not just this live stream Let's go 
little mound. So we'll put the other video up later. Okay. There you go. Central Hong Kong. There's a bird right there. I'm staying down by that big building with the X, the tall one that you see in the center of the picture. That's where my hotel is right down there. This is a, a DJI Osmo Pocket. This is the camera I use for most of my walking tours. Uh, the bigger camera I have is a Sony Alpha uh, A7 IV. I didn't bring that with me up here. Not a lot of pollution today. It's mostly just fog. But yeah, we do get pollution in Hong Kong quite a bit. Hello. Greetings. So... The plan is we're going to show you this and then I'm going to sign off and then I'm going to keep filming with this other camera and you'll see what's on the back side because uh, the signal gets really bad over there. You can't really live stream on the other side. I've tried, trust me, I've tried. Yeah, the view is amazing. We'll see the view here again in a second. But the whole view will be up in 4K, 60 frames a second uh, later. This is just a live stream so it's a little bit weak. I'm a permanent resident of Hong Kong. They already know that. It's not going to affect anything. Now here's the western side of Hong Kong Island. On a clear day, you can see Shenzhen, which is about 20 miles away. Giant skyscrapers of Shenzhen, mainland China. But not today. Today we can't even see Kowloon on the other side of the harbor. It's a pretty impressive world, isn't it? One lad always very happy. I don't know, it's pretty hot this week, don't we? Yeah, we eat out a lot. Mm, what a view. Okay, guys, so you can see this other camera here, the DJI Osmo Pocket. It's shooting in 4K, 60 frames a second. And the full video from this camera is going to be put online later today, so you can watch the rest of this hike. In better quality. I've got to shut down the live stream because, well, the signal just disappears back here. Anyway, we are on the peak in Hong Kong, China, looking down on central Hong Kong. Thanks a lot for watching today. Um, there will be another video. Okay, guys, we have just finished the live stream. You guys were watching. Uh, now I'm going to take you on the rest of the trip around the peak. Yeah? Take one last view. You can hear the fog horns blowing as the ferries come out heading to Macau, the gambling centers. 
All right, this is the peak Hong Kong. This is called Lugard Road. Uh, this is actually a road. <laughs> Sometimes cars come up here, and they get stuck. It's kind of silly. Uh, we're going to make our way around, entirely around the peak, and then we're going to walk down. And I'm going to show you all of it on this stream. So this is going to be a long walking video. We're going to walk and talk, and if we're lucky, maybe we'll see some animals or something. crews out here keeping it clean, chasing away the snakes, and yes, there are snakes in Hong Kong. I've only seen two on this path, and that's in like several thousand loops that I've made around this path. I've only seen snakes twice. I've seen wild pigs dozens of times. There are no monkeys on Hong Kong Island. There are no more big cats in Hong Kong. There used to be like tigers in Hong Kong. Oh, look at that. Look how pretty that is. That's pretty. I think one of the biggest surprises uh, people get when they come to Hong Kong is how undeveloped Hong Kong is. Yes, undeveloped. Only 25% of Hong Kong has been developed. 75% of Hong Kong looks like what you see here jungle, mountains, beaches, pristine. Uh, the hiking in Hong Kong is some of the best in the world. I'm not kidding you. The hiking in Hong Kong is some of the best in the world. Up and down mountains, down to the ocean, around the beaches, through the jungle. It's amazing. And I think that just shocks so many people when they come here. Uh, they come to Hong Kong thinking that they're going to be living like in Manhattan and yes, you can do that But you're only a few minutes away from well the jungle and nature and In fact in some ways that's kind of better than a sprawled out American city with suburbs and everything like that Where everybody has just a tiny piece of nature around them here. You've got carnivorous, monstrous mountains of nature that you can get to in only a few minutes. Now, on the left here you see that's not rock, that's actually cement, yeah? Uh, a, lot of the, a lot of the mountains have basically been cemented shut, yeah? Areas where there is an extreme risk of landslides. A big rock coming down this mountain and smashing into a skyscraper would kill lots of people. So in some parts, slope maintenance where they cement up the walls is a very common practice. You'll see that as we walk around. Down to my right is literally trillions of dollars of real estate and they don't want boulders smashing through them. <sighs> All around there are lots of little benches and vistas to look over the city. Of course, nature is kind of grown up a bit and uh, taken away some of the views. The fog is really, the fog is going to burn off. I think by the time we get around this loop, we might have a slightly better view. Uh, so for those who don't know, I actually lived in Hong Kong uh, about nine or ten years. Um, my kids grew up here. They went to elementary school here in Hong Kong before moving to the U.S. Uh, so we have a very special connection. A lot of our childhood, a lot of our young parent memories, which I think a lot of parents agree are like the most golden, uh, they revolve around life in Hong Kong and the expat community, uh, which was a great life, a very, very great place to raise kids. Uh, domestic servants, lots of friends, lots of opportunities to do stuff. It just cost a ton. <laughs> All right, let's keep going in the jungle. There's some birds here. Oh, I think the birds are scared of the dogs.
thought I'd let you listen to nature there for a minute. <laughs> I wasn't talking, I was just listening to the bugs and the uh, birds myself. All right, let's keep going around. We're about one third of the way around. Now, down over there, and you can't see it, with, but I can see it, there's a little flat clearing there. That used to be an artillery position of the British. The British had set up some big guns to protect the harbor's western approach. Uh, during World War II, those guns were manned and ready. I believe they were Indian troops that were in there at the time uh, for the Japanese invasion, but uh, Japanese bombers, aircraft came and bombed the cannons and the supplies, so the soldiers basically spiked the guns and had to go and fight as infantry. There are a lot of World War II um, positions around Hong Kong. There are uh, giant trenches, pillboxes, artillery batteries. It's pretty cool. All right. Over here is Super Tree. At least that's what my kids call it. That's my favorite little, I'm not quite halfway point but it is a uh, nice big banyan tree, rubber tree. So basically the uh, limbs drop down roots that then take hold and the tree sort of just takes over everything. The Indian rubber tree is what it's called. I wonder if I could grow one of those in America. So there are a few houses up here on the peak in this area, Lugard Road. It's actually very difficult for them to get back here. They have to drive. Uh, they get a special permit, lets them drive on this road. And yes, it's a very, very narrow road. Right, actually, up there you can see one of the houses. That one looks like it's being set up for renovation or it's abandoned. There's some newer places down here that are really posh. So for those who are missing wash, oh, here it is. This is the one. This is a new monster house. Someone built. It has just massive views. be hard to have a party back here though none of your guests could arrive you'd have to I think they actually get like golf carts and shuttle guests to parties you know the last couple days the jets have been taking off over the city it's been kind of weird now up on my right is a haunted mansion so this was a house that was built up here, but it was taken over by Japanese troops when they invaded Hong Kong in 1941. They used it as a place, like used it as a brothel. They used it as a torture area. And it's said that there are ghosts that haunt this house. The house has not been occupied for decades. Someone bought it and was gonna clean it up, but no, then he ended up putting up razor wire because urban explorers would break in, take pictures of the haunted house of Hong Kong. Oh, see, there's actually a car up there. Uh, 
So I'm only in Hong Kong for another day. In fact, tomorrow at this time, I'll be on a plane uh, heading back to New York. Hey, oh, I don't even want to think about it. It's a 15, maybe 16 hour flight back to New York City. Um, then I gotta get down to DC somehow. I haven't even figured that part out yet. I did get upgraded, not to a full flatbed, but to a pretty decent sized seat. So I should be comfortable for 15 hours. Um, but uh, it's still a long hike anyway you cut it. I picked the flight though, being during the day, so will be kind of awake. Um, not like a sleepy red eye. I just hate red eye flights, unless you're in a bed. So I'll be awake, watch some movies, take some naps, eat, repeat, etc. Um, don't know what movies. I should probably check and see what movies are there. <coughs> After you fly like 12 to 15 hour flights, flights to London, which are like six or seven, well, they just don't even matter anymore. So back here is the bamboo forest. This always destroys my internet connectivity whenever I come back here. Basically lose signal. All my live streams used to die here in the bamboo forest. It's another one of those rubber trees. Maybe it's just a jungle climate kind of tree. This is a very popular place with hikers and joggers. So living in Hong Kong, um, getting your fitness in is actually quite easy. You're always walking, you're always doing stuff. And like my step count. So in the US, I can be lucky if I get 10,000 steps a day. Uh, the last two weeks of this trip, I've been averaging about 20,000 steps a day. Uh, my highest day was almost 30,000 steps. Because you just walk everywhere. And there's so much to do when you walk. That's a pretty bird. <laughs> Sound like a cat. All right. So we've walked about literally halfway. Um, this is, that's a that's a small mountain over there we used to go up and hike every now and then it's just straight up straight up steps though i'm not in shape enough to do that i used to be when i was in hong kong <sighs> not anymore <laughs> not anymore side and making our way back to the peak gallery where we started this side isn't as pretty as the other side of course you don't have the view of the city but it's still a nice jungle with lots of birds These are Filipino domestic helpers walking the dogs, chatting with their friends. They work as maids and nannies and dog walkers. Hmm. 
Okay, there's a sign. We have walked 1,900 meters. We have 900 more to go. So we're two-thirds of the way done. So the Filipino Domestic Helper Program brings in mostly women from the Philippines, and they work as domestic servants, uh, maids, cooks, nannies, drivers, etc., dog walkers. They get paid about 600 U.S. dollars a month. They work six days a week, and they have to live in the employer's house. So you have to have a spare bedroom. Everyone has servants. I mean, in the expat community, everybody has a servant. Um, they coordinate all the kids' activities. They plan the birthdays. They take kids to play dates. Um, the kids grow very attached to the servants, the nannies. Uh, my son is still in touch with his first nanny. Uh, she's no longer a nanny. She's living in Canada, but uh, they still watch all the accomplishments of our boys and very happy that they had a role in their development. My youngest actually developed a slight Filipino accent when he was a baby. <laughs> it was kind of cute the way he spoke. He had this like up talk, this really happy talk in his uh, voice. Uh... Now this is a really cool tree up here. The roots have like made like well just take a look it's kind of funky isn't it all right let's keep walking seven hundred meters to go <laughs> And that's another meter mark. That's just to get back to the peak towers, not to get back down to central Hong Kong. That's another bit of a hike. We'll do that too. I'll see the time. 8.30. Yeah, I could do it. I got to get my kid ready for his flight. But uh, we should be okay. So here's a little bit of a workout area. Oh yeah, a few hundred more meters. All right. So here you can actually see road signs in the street. It's a little bit wider here. It's a lot more traffic on this side of the road. There's also a, it's also a special fire truck, ambulance, and police car specifically designed to patrol this area. So if someone gets injured, this tiny little Japanese-style fire truck or ambulance will respond and pick you up. The police also use like motorcycles to uh, patrol up here. There are a lot of weird weather conditions up here. Uh, in the typhoons, the police put riot bars over the windows to protect against falling trees. Uh, as you saw today, there is a fog. Sometimes it's incredibly foggy up here. You just can't see anything, uh, almost like a rain. And it's also a bit colder up here. So if it gets really, really cold in Hong Kong, 
it can get below freezing up here. You'll see frost up here. That only happened about hmm, twice, 10 years. Still brought my kids up here to see it though. They had never seen a window frosted over. They thought it was kind of cool. All right, I'm getting my split times, which are pretty slow because I was filming and stopping. We'll see if they speed up. those brooms. Those are big brooms made from the palm leaves here. Palm leaves are in abundance. Broom corn, not so much. Uh, where are we? Oh. So back over here in a bit is a waterfall. It just hasn't rained in a while, so it's not very active. When it does rain, it's gushing called Lugard Falls after the road Lugard I believe was one of the governors of Hong Kong most of the roads on the island are named after the Hong Kong governors the British governors yep no water this is Lugard Falls I assure you when it rains though it's quite quite pretty I mean there's just water gushing down this in fact I've seen water gushing over this path the rain has been so heavy. Okay, 200 meters back to the peak. Then we start the walk down. We might get a glass of water, though. Okay, we're almost back to the mailbox. That wasn't a long hike, was it? Pretty, though. So this up here is going to be the Peak Galleria. This is the shopping mall, the viewing deck, all that sort of stuff. This is what most people consider is the peak. The reality is the true peak is another couple hundred feet higher than this. Uh, you got to go up this road that's up here on the left. Lots of twists and turns, lots of uphills. Not going to there today. I have some videos on my channel from the True Peak. The view isn't as good as the view from here, by the way. All right, let's get back to Queen Elizabeth's mailbox, and then we'll uh, start our descent, which will take about another 45 minutes or so to get back to central Hong Kong. Yeah, this is going to be a long video. <laughs> I wonder if I can get this uploaded today. The Peak Lookout. This is a restaurant. This, though this is, used to be where the uh, sedan chair guys would rest 
And there you go. There is the British mailbox with Queen Elizabeth's signet. And the police traffic cones. Surprised I never stole a traffic cone. All right, let's go back over the other side. 842. Hmm. I'm debating if I should take the peak tram down because I uh, kind of need to get back to my kids. I'm not even sure the tram's running yet. Let's go take a look. There, it's not moving. That's the peak tram. It's going to be going down shortly. It's longer than it used to be. It sticks out at the station now. It's a new tram. They uh, renovated the tram while I was away. Still, even with the longer trams and greater capacity, they still have lines on the weekends with tourists. It's like uh, 12 US dollars for a round trip ticket. I think it's about six or seven, six dollars for a one-way ticket. And it's actually, technically, some people use it as a commuting option. So if you work near like the American consulate, the US consulate or the Bank of China, this is actually a great way to get to work if you live on the peak. You can jump on at one of the substations and uh, make your way up or down. I actually used to use it to come up here sometimes uh, for my hikes. Oh, tram is coming now, I hear it. We're not going to be in position when it goes by. Maybe we'll wait for the next one. This is the steepest part of this hike. Doo -doo -doo. I used to go up here and fly my drone before all these trees grew over. It used to be pretty empty. I mean, I could literally go up there. It was just short grass. Now it's heavily vegetation. Okay, well the tram is still in the station, it hasn't started moving, so we'll probably be able to catch it. I think. This is Barker Road Station. This is one of one, two, three, four substations on the peak tram system. A lot of people come here to get photos taken. I think it is moving. Yep. Now this is a funicular tram, which means there are counterweights. There's two trams. That was one. And you see there's two cables there. One is going down, one is going up. Uh, they're basically balanced against each other. So in about four or five minutes, we'll hear a tram going up. Meanwhile, we're going to walk down Barker Road and make our way back to central Hong Kong. We'll get a few more vistas and a few more viewpoints. And we can keep talking about life and whatnot. Here you see more of that uh, found, uh, slope management, uh, cliff management, trying to keep the uh, rocks from falling into central Hong Kong like missiles. They basically sealed up everything. 
You gotta remember when this road was built by the British using local laborers, um, <laughs> there were not a lot of steam shovels and cranes. This was a lot of guys with pickaxes and shovels digging up a mountain to build a road. It is a very narrow road. I've driven on this road. It, it can be fun, especially this turn, which is like a blind turn and not big enough for two cars. There used to be a mirror here, but it looks like somebody clipped it. And this is where I see a lot of wild pigs in this general area. We'll have to like look around and see if we see any today. Wild boar are pretty common here. And they can be mean too. Yeah. You can see all the, the dirt dug up here on the left. That is from the boar making their foot pass and scrounging around for trash. Hikers throw trash here, the boar come and eat it. Kind of a annoying thing. Damn it. Ugh. Oops, I dropped the camera for a moment. Oh well. I'm not sure if we're going to have enough battery life to make it all the way down the mountain. We'll have to see. We can always go back and use the iPhone and give you some highlights. Oh, it looks like they're building a new building up here. Someone managed to get permission to build. Or did they tear down one? You know, they might have torn down a building. Let me think. There, I remember this building I looked at, and I think, yeah, they tore one down. There was a building here. And they must have uh, tore it down to build something much more luxurious. Oh, the other tram I just hear off to my left. Can't see it right now though. Too thick. Look at this place. So they built this gigantic um, platform driveway so they could build like three luxury townhouses up on top. I think the prep work of this, the prep work alone was like 300 million US, something crazy like that. Oh wow, they got a lot of slope management going on on this side. So, looks like they are stopping landslides down here by moving all the trees. Now, this is an odd thing that, you know, you just walked through the peak with me and you saw this thick jungle, yeah? The reality is, that wasn't a jungle. Um, the locals who lived here for centuries used to come up to this mountain and cut down all the trees for firewood. Uh, when the British took possession of the peak, it was a naked mountain. Yeah, and there was just nothing here. And it was that way uh, through World War II. Yeah, even in World War II, you look at the photographs and there was just nothing on the peak. It was just empty. But after the war, they decided to let it naturally reforest, and that's the jungle you see today. So none of these trees are older than, say, World War II. That entire mountain over there of trees that you see, all is post-war. Uh, I can see the tram making its way up. I don't think that you guys can see it, though, because the trees are in the way. Post-World War II trees. <laughs> Ooh, look at this. Just zipping around the corners. So the base fare of a taxi is 27 Hong Kong, which is about $3.50 American. That's your base fare. And I don't know when it starts kicking over. But jumping around downtown Hong Kong is basically about a $5, $6 ride to get from the different areas, like Causeway Bay to Central, the areas you'd visit as a tourist. 
The subway, however, is much cheaper. The subway is 50 cents or something like that. Very clean, very efficient, air conditioned. Um, so if the subway is an option, and it is for a lot of people, take that. Also the buses and the trolleys, trams, a lot of public transit. So I showed you this place in my video the other day. This is Jack Ma's house, the founder of Alibaba.com, a multi-multi-billionaire. He spent, he bought the property for like 200 million US, and then he probably put in another 100 million, including this ridiculous fence system. <laughs> it's an electric fence, guys, with cameras every like five yards. There's cameras and stuff. So this guy, this used to be the entry driveway. Now it's Fort Knox. And he used to be able to look through this uh, at the incredible view. But he didn't like that, so he planted trees everywhere to obstruct the view. Hmm. planter boxes. Interesting. And there's a car coming. That's the crazy taxi we saw the other way. Living up here is kind of hard for taxis because there's, you know, there's not like a regular stream of them uh, just strolling. There's only people getting picked up. So these guys will probably have to call for taxis. Ah, here's the view again. The fog is burning off. We have got to walk down to that big building with the X's. That's the Bank of China building designed by I.M. Pei. He's the guy who designed the pyramid at the Louvre. He also designed the uh, modern art gallery in Washington, D.C. that I show you on my hikes around Washington, D.C. All right, let's keep going. A lot of bird song today. More cars coming. Now this used to be a hospital over here, uh, but it was a hospital only for Europeans. Local Chinese were not allowed to live to go to this hospital, but it was a, a maternity hospital. Uh, rules like that ended after World War II, uh, but the peak was basically an European enclave. Uh, no locals were allowed to live up here. Back to the old days of the British. All right, now we're off Barker Road, and we're going to go down Chatham Path to May Road. Now, if I remember, Barker used to be the general of Hong Kong, and May was the governor of Hong Kong, and Chatham was a guy, was like Barker's son who married May's daughter, or something like that. So this road kind of connected the two families. Now, in the old days of the British colonial empire, Hong Kong was a hardship post. It was not where they sent 
the best and the brightest of the diplomatic horn foreign service and military it was sort of a backwater facility uh, compared to say india or even singapore which was a little bit better but after world war ii hong kong far more strategically important uh sort of the colony they knew they would have this colony until at least 1997 technically under the law they could have kept hong kong island in perpetuity uh, but they realized hong kong island couldn't survive without kowloon and the new territories and the lease for those expired in 1997. so they did a deal and handed it back to china with the promise that it would be a different system that would last for at least 50 years it lasted about 25 30 and things now most people are and they're pretty upset. All right, now we do the switchback run. There are about nine of these switchbacks from here till May Road, which is the next breakpoint where I used to live. And then we have to go straight down along the tram tracks back into Hong Kong Park and over to my hotel. It's a pretty good workout. I've been walking about 40 minutes. And we got about another half hour to go. So as I mentioned, this was my normal hike every single day I lived in Hong Kong. I would do this. In fact, I did this sometimes twice a day. I just enjoyed it such. Uh, I'd go up about 6.30 in the morning, be done about 8.00 shower and then go to go downtown for the day when i lived in hong kong i actually lost a tremendous amount of weight i was in very good shape i've gained that back since i moved to america which really annoys me a great deal so we're going to lose it again i hope Another switchback. Now there is a road called Old Peak Road that goes more or less straight down. It doesn't do these switches, but it's it's really steep. <laughs> I mean, your toes are smushed into the front of your shoes, even more than this. There's the downtown. That's where we're headed. Now over here you see a, a bench. This is where the sedan chair guys used to take a break or switch, switch off. It took a team, it took six teams of two men each to carry one sedan chair with a foreigner up the peak. So before the peak tram, that is how you got to the peak. Uh, Twelve men strategically placed along this path would carry sedan chairs up to the peak so that the uh, Europeans didn't have to well, sweat as they went up the, up the mountain. It was not a very practical system. That's why they built the peak tram. Take people up directly, quickly. Here you get a great view of central Hong Kong as you walk down this. In fact, this is a better view than it used to be. They removed a lot of trees that were used to be here. I'm not sure why that is, if they fear the trees are gonna like fall over and start a landslide or something.
Now as we go down this, this is what I affectionately call halfway rock. This rock is about halfway down the switchbacks between uh, Barker and May Road. And this is a good enough spot for a view. So this is the view from Halfway Rock, and we'll keep going down. Okay. All right, sorry, I had to deal with my kids' flight information. Keep going down. Uh, now this house here um, this was built as a school for uh, Amerasian kids, or not Amerasian, uh, European, Eurasian kids, European and Amer Asian mixed kids, who were kind of shunned by the local schools and shunned by the international schools. So it was a place specifically designed to help them. It then got taken over as a private house. Um, it was for rent. When I lived in Hong Kong, you could rent it for 25,000 US dollars a month, 25,000 US dollars per month. Had like five or six bedrooms. And you couldn't actually get to it. You had to take a golf cart up the mountain just to get to it, which was a bit crazy. But people liked living in the jungle. Sadly, a giant, off the, a giant apartment building destroyed the view it used to have. Such is life. But there it is. Now up on the left-hand side are the servants' quarters. Uh, they had several servants living there. And on the right-hand side is the main house. It's changed hands a couple times. It's number one, Chatham Path is the address. Not sure who's the owner now. And down we go. And it's got a note from my mobile provider. I only have one gigabyte of data left on my phone, which is kind of annoying. Only one more day, though. Should be okay. Doing that live video, that certainly took up a chunk of data.
All right, almost to May Road. And then we have to do like several other roads before we get back to the hotel. But the walk down is down steps down the peak tram track. So we'll see the tram a couple times. It should be quite cool looking. Oh, the path just like leveled off there for a second. So my toes were able to recover from being jammed in the front of my shoes the last 20 minutes. Uh, today, I don't know what I'm going to do today. Uh, I think my kid is going to go back to his old international school and see some friends. And then he's going to go to a soccer game at his international school and see some of his teammates. And my other kid goes to Japan today. And then tomorrow I leave Hong Kong and fly back to the U.S. And so you'll be seeing me back in the White House by the end of the week, I suspect, depending on the jet lag. Whew, we're already getting a battery warning on this camera. I don't think we've got much more to go on this stream. I'll show you the highlights of the rest of the hike uh, filming with the other camera, but uh, we'll see. We'll get you back down to Central. At least you'll see what it's like, but the 24-7 the type commentary will have to come to an end when this camera dies. This camera has about an 80-minute battery lifespan. It's pretty good. I have extra battery packs, which I didn't bring with me because it's just more stuff to put in my running shorts. And they don't have that big of pockets. That's actually a public bathroom right there. If you're climbing up the peak, it can be tiring. You're drinking a lot of water. And there's a lot of those strategically placed around the city. Not the most elegant places, but uh, sometimes that's all you need. can hear a tram coming. This is the May Road stop. This is where I used to get on the tram when I was going uh, when I lived here on May Road. Mui Do was May Road in Cantonese. The tram is not running right now. Over there is a that's a parking garage. There's like 15 parking spots over there and there's like housing above it for the drivers. Um, back in the old days they kind of needed a spot to put all their cars and a place for the chauffeurs to live. All right, we're going down Clovelly Path. Oh, I used to live down there at the end of the road. That's my building with the two white spires on the top. The cheapest building on this street. Yeah, <laughs> the cheapest apartments on this street. It was a beautiful neighborhood. I lived in the cheapest place. That was like, okay, I get all the benefits of a high, high class neighborhood. Unfortunately, the downsides was like the grocery store was really expensive. Let's keep going down this path. bollards they've got like little red stones in them <laughs> make sure you don't run over and fall down this path this path now we're on Bruin path I always remember this path because my very first day in Hong Kong well we landed in Hong Kong in the evening and I had to like put together a couple beds so the kids could have a place to sleep so we flew over I put the beds together and then I immediately passed out I mean I don't even remember I just like laid on the bed and that was it uh, the kids and my wife and their godparents, they went over to have something to eat. And uh, I slept through the night. The next morning, I got up early. The kids are like, I'm hungry. I want McDonald's pancakes. So we walked down this path to central Hong Kong. We didn't really know where we were going. And we found a McDonald's, and they had pancakes for their first breakfast in Hong Kong. They were very little back then. I think one of them was in a stroller. I always remember this path. Oh. 
pretty soon we're going to get to the steps and my life will be a little easier. Oof. So down over there is a playground. That's where I taught my kids how to ride a bicycle. <laughs> it was the only flat space I could find. They had a lot of fun. Okay, a couple more turns and then we start the downhill. I have to figure out what I'm going to eat today. I think we're going to have fish and chips because I want to see Matthew before I go. We had noodles last night. Um, sort of the kids' last noodles. I think my son wants Chinese food tonight. So we might, satisfy, we might hit that up. There's a doggy. I wanted to get a Shibu. That's the dog on the right. Very common here. But uh, from what I read, they're a bit temperamental. And if you let them off the leash, they'll bolt. Beautiful dogs. A little stubborn. Oh well. That's the peak tram tracks right over there. The uh, tram is moving. I don't know where it is right now, but I can hear the cables banging and all that. Now the cool thing is, like, you have to push a button here. If you push the button, then the lights usually change. Let's wait for a tram. Should be coming right about now. There's a crew working on the tracks here. So right over there, that building, that's called Mother's Choice. That is an orphanage here in Hong Kong. Uh, they work with uh, a lot of local girls and domestic workers who end up pregnant and uh, the father or whatever, for whatever reason, they don't can't, can't take care of the kid. They place a lot of kids in the U.S., Mother's Choice does. Um, they also deal with special needs kids. Uh, Hong Kong doesn't really have all the resources you would expect for special needs. Uh, so a lot of those kids end up in this orphanage and uh, they get placed with families in the West who are capable of dealing with special needs kids. But uh, Mother's Choice, it's a really good charity and they're based right there in that building. So they're all here and they're working on we're doing the track bed. Here comes the tram itself. The tram has got to go slow through the construction. All the tourists looking at us. These are the old. This is like the old old system. I think this is just here for uh, historical purposes. I don't think this is functional anymore. But there goes one tram up. The other tram will be coming down shortly.
Okay, what road is this? I can't remember. I've been gone so long, I've forgotten all the names. We're gonna continue down Tramway Path. Oh, there's a cool picture. Okay, tramway path. Let's keep taking you down. When you walk this far, a few more blocks doesn't bother you. Ask you if I can get my salary I think the uh, thing about Hong Kong is like you start to realize you can walk to do things. And once you realize that, you start doing it more often. It's like, yeah, I can, I can walk to the grocery store. I can walk to the drugstore. I can walk to my dentist appointment. I can walk to the kids' event. And uh, it just leads to a healthier lifestyle where you walk a lot more. There was the tramway path. I'll let you guys see where I'm going down. All these steps so you don't get dizzy. Now, I believe there's a school, a public school here on my right. Not sure if they're in session today. It doesn't look like it. Is it spring break already? I think it is a half week or something like that. Oh no, this is being renovated. St. Paul's Co-Educational College. It looks like they're renovating this building. I think this is... It's not a government... It's like a subsidized school. It's not truly government. It's not truly private. Now over here is the old trams. The red one is the uh, tram that I used to ride on when I lived in Hong Kong. And the green one is the one that predates that. Technically, these trams are here as backups should something befall the main tram, but I think they're more here just for scenery. They didn't want to get rid of them. It looks like they're building a storage facility. Let's keep going down. All right. This is Kennedy Road. We gotta cross this bridge and make our way down some more. Now over there, that is the Masonic Temple. For Hong Kong. I used to sing The Simpsons. Who controls the British pound? Who keeps the metric? Who keeps the What is this song? Who controls the British pound? Who keeps the metric system down? We do. We do. Who rigs every Oscar night? Who keeps the Martians out of sight? We do. We do. Something like that. Anyway, we are back down in Central, we have a tram approaching, I believe. We should be able to get a good view of it. There's a big line of tourists waiting for the next tram departure. And we can wait too. There's actually a little cafe here, the Tram View Cafe. I remember when this opened. Still in business. Enough people walking by. Oh, right over here. We'll pause for a moment. Okay, there's that tram coming in. Oh, actually all the passengers are about to come out, I suspect. Let's get out of the way of them. This is the WWF, the World Wildlife Foundation. This is their 
like showroom museum for Asia, attracting people to the environmental cause here in Asia, which is in some ways more developed, in some ways less developed. <laughs> the, uh, the people in Asia feel the effects of the impact on the environment, such as heat, pollution is a huge thing. Uh, you know, there are problems with water even, uh, animal diversity, fishing stocks, etc. They feel that on a very real level over here. But then on the other hand, you've got a lot of people who are just like, build a new factory, burn coal, eat all the fish we can find. And so it's, it's kind of a crazy thing. Okay, this is the Squash Center in Hong Kong Park. We are almost, almost back to our hotel. Just a few more steps. I just realized I haven't seen a fire truck the entire trip. I didn't see any fire trucks in England. And I heard one here, but I didn't actually see it. There's a fire station right down there. Um, can link oh hang on okay so i got interrupted anyway there was a video i just posted of the right that was the fire trucks coming out of this station they have the old british style fire trucks and european fire trucks they need them here because well the roads are so narrow all right let's go into the park it is a beautiful park isn't it Oh, I forgot about this. Let me show you this thing. So up here, ugh, this is what's known as the Rainbow Walkway. And it's a uh, protected with glass and it's a beautiful rainbow color. Let me see it as you're walking here. And it leads us up to this pink building up here. Now, all of Hong Kong Park used to be a military barracks for the British. Uh, when they left uh, this area, they turned this park into a public park and they repurposed the buildings. Now, this building up here is the Cotton Tree Drive, that's the name of the road, Cotton Tree Drive Wedding Registration Building, okay? This is where you go to get married, yeah? Cotton Tree Drive Marriage Registry. It's a government building. It's official, US, official Hong Kong government. But uh, people come here, take their pictures in front of a beautiful building, the little heart and the flowers. And uh, this is where you get married in Hong Kong if you don't want to go to a church. Yeah. That's kind of cool. I mean, why just go to a, a boring office building, yeah? Why not go to something historical and beautiful with flowers and all that? Okay, school group of kids. Let's get through them. So the kids come out here to Hong Kong Park, right here in the center of the city. They're looking for turtles. There are hundreds of turtles in, koi, in this koi pond here. Lots of fish. Oh, here are the turtles, guys. I like turtles. And here's a waterfall on the park. It really is a truly lovely park, and it's right in central Hong Kong. I mean, look, you can see the skyscrapers dwarfing in the distance. But right here you have this, like, respite of nature. And uh, all these old colonial-era buildings back from the British military days. 
they've been repurposed into like meeting halls. There's a museum of crockery. Yeah, <laughs> there's a museum of tea sets uh, in one of these old uh, refurbished British military bases and uh, assembly halls if you want to have a meeting or something. This is a weird clock tower. Oh, and there's the waterfall I'm going to walk through because it's so hot. For those of you who are wondering, this has been a 10,000 step adventure, uh, 10,481 steps to be exact. That's about seven kilometers, uh, which is a little bit more, about three and a half miles or so, uh, since we got up at the peak to down here. It doesn't really seem that long. Might have felt that long to you because I'm boring, but eh, that's life. <laughs> Okay, guys, let's get over to this fountain. Now, the cool thing about this fountain, it's very easy to jump into it. Just take the right step. Ah! We're getting wet. Oh, that felt good. Especially to someone who needs a shower. <laughs> Whew. So we are back down in Hong Kong Park in the Admiralty District of Hong Kong. This building up here is the British uh, consulate up ahead. They actually are very busy consulate. As you may know, uh, several million Hong Kong residents have the right to move to England if they so desire. Uh, I think it's like four million can move to England if it gets too bad. Actually, where is the building? It used to be here. I don't know where it is now. And the Tesla. Alrighty. So we're going to walk into this shopping mall, which is really air-conditioned, and will take us back to my hotel. <laughs> you guys want to see the shopping mall? Hey, we've come this far, why not, yeah? Ooh. Feels weird to have the sidewalk moving underneath me with this escalator. now in the Pacific Place shopping mall. My hotel is on the other side of this mall. We'll make our way over. That section's closed. It hasn't really opened. That's Cartier and Tiffany's and Bulgari. And Hermé and Yves Saint Laurent and Benetton. Oh, let's see what else we got here. It's got a lot of high-end stuff. Yeah, they're still opening. That's Hermé. Point not Paris, never heard of them. La, La Perla. It's all luxury brands, basically. There's no, uh, no Mr. Pretzel. Oh, it's Louis Vuitton over there. Goyard, Paris. Purses that are way too expensive, I'm sure. Suitcases. Good lord, who travels like that? Let's put that on a plane. Nobody wants to put that on a plane. Uh, that's Dior, Burberry downstairs. Montclair. Chanel is over on the right. And Gucci up here on my left. 
Chanel actually has two floors. Gucci, but just purses. There's Chanel. Oh, they're opening a children's Chanel pretty soon. They have a children's Chanel on the other side. Bottega Veneta. Van Cleef. Fendi. There's Jimmy Choo's. Fendi's actually two floors. Prada. Prada goes down to the basement as well. There's two floors of Prada. Celine. Yeah. It's pretty luxurious. Okay. Let's just keep going. We gotta go downstairs. There's Ferragamo. So like walking, I mean, you basically, you need to read Vogue magazine just to know what all these stores sell. <laughs> these are not, there's no Aunt Annie's pretzels or Cinnabon, which is a shame because a Cinnabon would really be good. All right, now how do I get down over here? There used to be an elevator, I thought. There it is, escalator. Oh, well, this is easy enough. Look at that, right from... The shopping mall directly into the JW Marriott where I am crashing. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed this trip around Hong Kong. I am gonna go back to my hotel room and crash for a while. Thanks a lot for watching. Uh, there are a lot of other Hong Kong trips on my channel. Um, though now I'm of course based in Washington DC. I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.